Hello and welcome back to a very merry classic TV holiday event. I'm Hayden J. Pilato and I'm sitting next to the very beautiful and gorgeous and perfect skin, uh, Karen Richmond. I love these introductions. Aren't we, I mean, aren't we having a great time here without meeting all these classic TV icons and, and seeing just how um, powerful the, uh, the, uh, the medium of television is? Uh, just how many millions and millions of people are reached in so many positive ways when the product is uh, quality, uh, sp especially family oriented. I love hearing the behind the scenes stories, don't yes. you? Yes. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, it's, it's beautiful. That's the things we never get to hear as, as you know, just general viewers of television. Exactly, and it's explained too in many of the books that these, these authors have written. So and they're all behind us here and at the end of the show you can feel free to grab the book of your choice and bring it to the a celebrity who is here and they will sign it for you and then what we do is you just go up to the counter um, on the honor system and uh, and purchase it. Okay, our next guest, next, we have two gentlemen uh, who have played pertinent roles in the big picture scheme of things with regard to television in the 1960s and the 1970s in particular. One is the author of the Astounding Companion book to the career of the most celebrated actress of music, television, and film. Another is, is best known for his uh, role um, um, on, oh, he's not here, on, <laughs> on Taxi, uh, the first season of Taxi, and he's also made countless classic TV appearances. So please, let's have a nice welcome for Pierre Patrick and Randall Carver. <laughs> Okay. Who's the? Oh yeah, we got to shut the cell phones off. No, she's playing on purpose. That's Doris Day singing "Case of Ross." Duh. Okay. It's so always good to bring a sister and then yes, this whole yes, He brings yes. his theme song with him. Nice. <laughs> nice. Wherever I go. We all need someone to follow us around with a theme song. Absolutely. Hello. Hi. How, how are you, Randall? Great. Very wonderful to see you. Randall Carver from Taxi. <laughs> now, we're going to start right off with you because you have an incredible um, Christmas episode from Taxi that you can tell us about. Yes, 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 yes I, I can. T right, I can you. tell you about that. This was in the in the first year. Uh, I don't remember much of what the episode was about because the making of the episode was uh, so ridiculous and very Andy Kaufman esque. Uh, oh, stop. Here, use this. So this is a much better. Thing. Okay. Oh yes, I, I, yeah, feel, I feel much better now. Uh, uh, Andy, when he signed the contract to do Taxi, uh, also had a alter ego of his, a character he played named Tony Clifton. <laughs> Some of you people are giggling. You might remember that Tony Clifton uh, was a character that Andy played, and uh, he wanted to have uh, him cast in the show to be uh, Danny DeVito's brother on the show and this was in the, the sketch. Uh, uh, so, uh, Ed Weinberger, the producer, said fine, and Andy came in before we rehearsed, and he wanted to be that character all week long, on and off the camera. So he came there very early and was in makeup and costume for a couple of hours with a toupee to transform himself into this Tony Clifton, Las Vegas lounge singer kind of a person. Uh, so, uh, before we uh, met him on uh, Monday, Ed, uh, Mr. Weinberger called us all in and said, now, <clears throat> we have a new character that's going to be playing uh, Danny DeVito's brother uh, in this episode, and it is not Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman is off this week. So Tony Clifton should be return, re referred to as Mr. Clifton, Tony Clifton. It is not Andy Kaufman and... Uh, I guarantee you that this Mr. Clifton will answer to Andy's name, so just be prepared. So uh, we all got there uh, at the regular time, and there was Andy sitting there, and he had very thick makeup on, appliances that changed the look of his face, and he was wearing a tuxedo, lounge lizard, lizard <laughs> Vegas style kind of a guy. Well, we started rehearsals at the, uh, we have a reading at the table before uh, we go off and they do some rewrites and everything. 
And so uh, this Tony Clifton guy was a poor actor. Uh, he is reading the first three, he would bobble the lines and he messed them up and he transposed them and then he had an attitude about it when they tried to correct him. It was just, it was just a, a hell of an actor and I mean that in the worst sense. So we rehearsed all day long and all of us were just shaking our heads saying this, is, we, this isn't going to work out, they've got to do something about this. Uh, but we didn't know what to do because this Tony Clifton, not Andy Kaufman, was such a bad actor. Well, he came back on Tuesday, and it was more of the same and a lot worse. He kept wanting to have the writers rewrite the scenes he was in and do all these other things. And he would yell at the director, and he would get upset, and he'd stomp off and stomp around and then come back. And then finally, Tuesday evening was over, and we were all the cast was just... A, the tears, we were like, oh my gosh, we, we got like th Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We'd shoot this on Friday night. What are we going to do? We haven't had one straight run through of anybody's scene. Everybody was nuts. So we come in the next day, and uh, Ed Weinberger uh, says that uh, there's another actor that's going to be coming in at noon, and he's going to be playing the role that uh, Tony Clifton had. <laughs> uh, Tony has been let go uh, from the show. Uh, so we all shook our heads and we were rehearsed and then about an hour before lunch Tony Clifton shows up after being fired along with Bob Zamuda his agent right and he comes in and he is, says that he has flown in four girls from Vegas for us and there were about a half a dozen and one went over to hang on Ed Weinberger one was being nice to me and everybody was just astounded that this would happen what had happened is this Tony Clifton character wanted Ed Weinberger, the head executive producer and creator of Taxi, to fire him face to face on that scene. <laughs> well, it went on for about 30 minutes. Uh, everybody, there's music and dancing and people were, girls were hitting on the guys and, and Andy had brought everybody a little mechanical toy like he got me a, a toy dachshund and everybody was playing, opened the packages, was playing the little dogs barking. <laughs> Oh, like it was a pandemonium and finally uh, he wouldn't leave he wouldn't leave and so finally Judd Hirsch and Jeff Conaway and Tony Danza had a new Super 8 camera and he started filming all this stuff that was going on and then two real live guards security from Paramount Studios showed up on the sound stage and physically removed Andy Kaufman and uh, also Judd Hirsch was involved and, uh, Dan, and uh, Tony Danza and uh, Jeff Conaway. And they threw him off the stage and then threw him off the lot and told him never to come back again. Now we had just about two and a half days to put that show together. And I still have no idea what it was about. But I'll never forget <laughs> the time I met Tony Clifton when we were working on that darn Christmas show. A Tony Clifton Christmas, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> when Andy came back the following week, uh, uh, Tony uh, Danza had, had some uh, film, and we were all in the room watching it. And Andy comes walking by, and he hears uh, us laughing at this film. And he says, "Oh, what's that?" He said, "Oh, it was just this." ass that was on last week and he says geez yeah what an ass <laughs> and welcome back to the Christmas yes. show <laughs> okay how much you're trying to segue into doris day <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do it quickly by Things saying that i'm an agent but not that kind of agent <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so there you go. um actually now Go Doris ahead. did um, the Doris Day show, of course, and you wrote, you wrote the Doris Day companion book, and you talked mm -hmm. about that show. She did a couple Christmas episodes. She on did the show? three Christmas uh, show. I actually, I brought props, oh, which great. is so much easier than a Doris Day ah. Animal Foundation bag, yes. which is always good to support. Which it's a great I love charity. her for that. Exactly. Can I have to She's say one been. Thing? Yes. Oh, go ahead. May I? Yeah, yeah please. Oh, oh, I, <laughs> it's I'm, your show. I'm just, no, not really. Yeah, it's, no, her no, no, show. it's her show. I just want to say that I was so excited that you have a relationship with Doris Day because I am personally um, such a huge animal advocate and rescue person, and I know that that is her number one. Yeah, it's very, very important. So my question for you is ultimately going to be about that if we have time, but mm -hmm. I just 
please let her know that we're all really grateful for the work she does. Yeah, with yeah and, and she may see this, and she's got the Doris Day Animal Foundation and the Animal League, which is from Washington, D.C., which is associated with Human League for Animals. Wait a minute, Doris is going to see this? Uh, yeah, I'm sure she will. I'm okay. sure she will. Okay. 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 Good. Yes. So, um, to get back to your, your Christmas uh, story, yes, there are three, actually, Doris Day show oh, Christmas great. episodes. Yes, yeah, such a wonderful show. They're all show. on one DVD, which is terrific. Lovely. Lovely. And uh, one from the uh, second season, and where she lived on a farm, and McLean Stevenson, Rosemary, yes. come and visit, which yes. is great. Yes. And also the office party. The second one, Billy D. Wolf plays a Scrooge character, similar to what he did in Frosty the Frosty Snowman. Frosty the Snowman, right. Exactly. And, of course, he changes once he hears Doris Day sing, because she changes all of us when she sings. And, uh, and then the other one, the last one, is a murder takes place committed by Charles Nelson Riley. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the who done it Doris. Which, yes, which episode does she turn to the camera and say well, She does it in the the, the, the second Chris, the first Christmas episode and the second Christmas episode. And he retook it and put it on the third. What what made her sure. what was her inspiration for that? I mean I thought that was such a neat thing where she broke character and she actually broke the third wall and yeah. turned to the Actually camera. a lot of shows were kind of doing that a little bit. Uh, what year was in the sixties. So this was no, this was the seventies. So uh, 70, 69, 71, and seventy-two, and also the Doors Day Christmas album is available. It's an album I helped compile, and it's terrific. And it's got, it's it's amazingly well done. I, I live in Beverly Hills, and you can actually hear it in the speakers when the, you walk around, which is Aww. which is really cool. She sings like a dream. She really does, and uh, that's terrific. And also. I, I bought all kinds of stuff. Great. There are two books that are available. Oh. Uh, the, the New Doors Day Paper Doll books. Wow. Um, I worked on this one, and this one also benefits the animals, which is great. And uh, these, you know, money helps the animals when you buy these books, which is great. Oh it's got costumes from her shows. Where can they get these books? Everywhere. Amazon, all that stuff. It's, it's, it's available. Exactly. And uh, the last thing I'm going to plug is uh, a Christmas CD I produced. It got a Grammy nomination, wow. uh, which I'll let go. Leif Garrett plays our villain, and uh, Trina McGee Davis from Boy Meets World is in this CD. And um, we have Innocent, which was a group that was managed by Lynn Errolis, Justin Timberlake's mother. And uh, we had a lot of fun putting this together. It's called A Christmas That Almost Wasn't, and it was written by a poet named Ogden Nash, who was the first poet to actually get a stamp uh, which is pretty cool. So we had a big ceremony for that in Washington, D.C., which I'm sorry, was nice. What he, get? he got a stamp. Oh, there's an odd the Nash stamp, stamp where there's actually a poem written did on it. Did Yes. I think that I should uh, see a Like one it. that's really good is uh, Candy is Dandy, but Liquor is Quicker. <laughs> that was one of his, uh, which he's really famous <laughs> for. So, uh, um, um, yes. Did she ever do a musical Christmas special after the Doris Day show ended? Doris did. Funny that you mentioned that. Uh, <laughs> oh my! So uh, Doris did did two Chris, two musical specials. They weren't Christmas. There you go. So uh, this is the Doris Day sentimental journey special. Actually, it's a Doris Day special. Uh, this is great because they went to her house, and they want to recreate her garden and everything that was there. And they put that literally on the CBS lot at CBS Studio uh, by Fairfax. They recreate this amazing garden with, with a lake and, and the dog statue they brought from the house. She brought in her dogs. Rock Hudson is one of the guests in that show. And uh, Perry Como. And it's really a concert of Doris Day. She sings all her hits, Sentimental Journey, Secret Love. Uh, it's magic. And also Both Sides Nile, uh, Ju Judy Collins, Grammy-nominated hit a few years ago. Some Beatles stuff and uh, Simon and Garfunkel. So it's really a musical escapade of her career, which is, which is really, really cool. So that's a great, great special to get. And since we are talking about the special, this was her last special called Doris Day Today. Um, George Schaffler, who did Laughing, produced it. And um, you've got some great duets with John Denver and Doris. And uh, Rich Little played all the leading men, the voices of, of everybody that worked on with her. 
and Tim Conway, that is usual Carol Burnett old thing with, with Doris. So uh, all this is available. It's all new. It's on DVD. It's on Amazon and everywhere else. So uh, it's terrific. It's wonderful. It's understand. Thank you for coming to Paris. Sure, absolutely. You get packages. Yes. Tonight. Oh, thanks. That's great. Actually, we have also Julie, Julie Lampu in the audience. She was yeah. Doris Day's secretary. Let's have it. Well, also, there's somebody really important in the audience. Also, Stan Livingston played her son. And please don't eat the daisies. Oh my God! Which was, you know, she had four kids that, uh, and he was the one actually giving the bag and then dropping off the window. Wow. And then to people walking in in New York. There we go. And Doris was amazing with kids, wasn't she? I mean, she, her timing and coordinating four boys and everything. She was really. She, and she's still amazing. She's, she's in great health and she's doing great. Right. Let's have a nice day. God bless you, George. Thank you for everything you've done for the universe. Did you ever work with George? No, I, I did. I, I worked with uh, Lucille Ball. Okay. And, and, and Andy Griffith on that show. Okay. Okay, but and, and Doris and Lucy were good friends. Is, is that true? They or? were good friends. You know, Lucy did an interview with Doris when, when Lucy had a radio show. Oh. In between Here's Lucy and I Love and uh, the Lucy Show, she had a break. And they decided, hey, let's put on the radio. And she went on the set of Do Not Disturb. And there's a really nice interview between the two of them. I think you can find it on YouTube, where um, Lucy was great at rehearsing. And she loved to rehearse. Doris hated to rehearse. She liked to do it live. So the two of them compare their acting style. And it's really an interesting interview how the two of them talk about that. So I've it's, heard it's a little bit of that, and Lucy really, uh, she, uh, if I recall that interview, she loved the Doris Day movies, and she, she told her, thank you so much for all the... Yeah, and Gary Morton started visiting Doris in Carmel after uh, Lucy passed away, and they became good friends, and there was a big reunion in 93 in Carmel um, that I went to, and Desi Arnaz was there, and um, yeah, so they always they always stayed really close. And Lovely. you know, Lucy admired Doris Day. Again, you know, Lucy like, always like, like everyone. Talent. So yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. Thanks for thank having me. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Now, Ray, can you do some of the other classic shows? Just name into some of the shows that you did before. Uh, well, I, I was a I was a regular on Mary Hartman. Mary Hartman. I'm the only mm -hmm. guy that married. Uh, the character played by Deborah Lee Scott that was uh, Louise Lasser's sister on the show. Hotsy Totsy from Welcome yeah, Back. She used to go through a lot of boyfriends like this, and I was the fool that married her. So <laughs> that's my claim to fame. Yeah. And what you did a lot of you did a lot of classic TV shows. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, yes, fun. Murder She Wrote. Murder, uh -huh. uh, my first guest star role was Room Two Twenty Two. Monumental was, series, one of the first dramedies of, of television. That's right. I, I came in there, and uh, I was a kind of an incorrigible type. And uh, this was when they were starting to do more, uh, you know, re re more ordinary shows and out of the ord. Instead of like we can take the guy and make him better. In my and, situation, and James L. Brooks created that show, yes. and then later Mary Tyler Moore, and right. even wrote a Doris Day pivotal episode. That's right. And, and won an Oscar. That's right, but was I was amazing. the kind of character that at the end of me, they had to send me back to reform school. So they didn't, they didn't make a difference in my life. But the, I thought that was kind of grown up of them for the time. Yeah, absolutely. Now yes, you have yes. a website, Randall? Uh, yes, uh -huh, it's Randall Carver Realtor. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. Anybody looking for a house for fun? Randall Carver <laughs> Realtor. Yeah, so right. Give me a call. We'll set you up. In a house. There you go. <laughs> house, you want to buy a house? You want to sell a house? Whatever. I'll tell you all kinds of taxi stories. <laughs> Pick them up and bring them over. Thank you so much, Randall. Thank you for, for having me. Here. Here. Thank you for